stay standing for the national anthem. You were left. Oh. Yeah. 
for joining us. Today is the day we celebrate our veterans, but every day is a day that we honor them. We're so fortunate to have a team who puts together this wonderful event each year. Please shout out to Deborah and Keith Barnes, Teresa Smith and Christina Bushnell for once again organizing today's event. And a wonderful job to Ms. Apples Lane for singing our national anthem. Thank you to our new drumming class and the Celeste teachers, teachers and students for the kind gifts. And please welcome and thank you to the color guard, Tony Molina, and of course all of our veterans for today's celebration. I will now hand it over to Tony to introduce our veterans. It's so good to see all your smiling faces. You're happy, you're right? Yeah. I'm going to pass the mic around and have each veteran introduce themselves. And we're fortunate to have Ed Ben. He's the alumnus from this school. From Many moons ago. Right, Ed? Ed is our only Celeste World War II person still alive with us today. And his dad was Chief Archie Ben. And way back in 1929, his, his dad's painting was on the curtain with him coming down the Sledge River in his canoe many long time ago. And he was also served not only in the Navy, but in the United States Air Force Reserve. Thank you, Tony. You said everything I was going to say. <laughs> but I, I'm privileged to come over here to join you this school that we've done this for a number of years. I didn't come over here last year because of the epidemic that, that we were suffering with, you know. But yes, I, I left here to join the Navy in 1945, about three months after I turned 17. Lucky that the uh, war ended before I got overseas, but I, I did serve in the Philippine Islands. Thank you. I'm Kevin Gidell, and I served in the United States Marine Corps from 1981 to 87. Chief Barnes, United States Air Force, 1990 to 1997. Caroline Kimberly, I was in the Air Force from 2017 to 21. Ross Stanford, I served in Vietnam, uh, Navy, Army, and Air Force for 15 years. Uh, Chester Gardner, and I served in the Navy from 1960 to 1963 on active duty and then reserves for the rest of the 20. Thank you. Roger Roberts in the U.S. Army, 1967 to 1971. Steve Reisner, U.S. Army, 1973 to 77. Navy, 1969 to 1973. Buster Lane, I served in the uh, U.S. Navy, 69 to 73.
Jonathan Kozenar, United States Marine Corps, 2001 to 2005. Ed Palmer, I served in the Navy. In 1956, I almost forgot. Kevin Palmer served in the United States Army in uh, 1967 to 1970, and then I stayed, uh, worked at the Pentagon until 78, and moved back to Salettes. So I've been involved with this auxiliary, a BFW auxiliary. I currently am the president of the state of Oregon and the BFW auxiliary. Larry Brown, United States Navy, served in Vietnam 64 to 66, retired, retired from the Navy Reserve in 1969, about 23 years service. Thank you. Abe Cole, I served in the U.S. Army 1964 to 1970. Johnny Lyons, Army, 1983 to 1987. The president of the United States, the BFW of Slides, 0732. My name is Don Dockstinger. I served in the U.S. Coast Guard from 1971 to 1977.
guest speaker, Keith Barnes, formerly known as Mrs. Barnes' husband. Um, so Keith comes, or Keith was enlisted in the Air Force right after high school. He served from 1990 to 1997. In 1992, he deployed twice to Southwest Asia in support of Operation Southern Watch, and in 1996, in support of rugged Nepal Nautilus. Sorry. After separating from the Air Force, he completed a 20 plus year career in law enforcement. Upon retiring, he and Mrs. Barnes moved to the coast where he grew up. Now, he is the County Veterans Service Officer and manages the Lincoln County Veterans Service Office. His grandfather served in the Navy, his father in the Army, his father-in-law in the Army, his son is currently active duty in the Army, and his son-in-law is currently in the Navy. Please welcome Keith Barnes. Today, I wanted to uh, talk about what is a veteran. And when I mentioned something that you guys took part in, could you guys, could the veterans please stand? So, a veteran is a person who served on active duty in the United States military, whether it be the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard, the Air Force, or the Space Force, and received an honorable or under honorable or general conditions. They could have been volunteered, or they could have been drafted into the military. For our veterans here, who was a draftee? And who volunteered? During the course of your service, you're awarded certain medals for activities that you took part in. If I could have a veteran who received a combat action badge, a combat infantry badge, or a combat action ribbon, please stand. These are individuals that must have personally been present or actively engaged in being engaged by the enemy and performing satisfactorily in accordance with the prescribed rules of engagement. These are combat veterans. These are the ones that actually took part in combat operations. Many people always remember or always think of the veteran as being the individual who took part in combat. But as we see from the stage here, it takes many individuals to support them. And they are veterans as well. For the veterans, if you received an Expeditionary Forces Medal, Expeditionary Forces Medal. I'll get to that one. Big words. This is the Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal may be authorized for three categories of operation. U.S. military operations, U.S. military operations in direct support of the United Nations, and U.S. operations to assist friendly or foreign nations. The medal was awarded for operations for which no other U.S. campaign medal is approved or foreign armed opposition or imminent threat of hostile action was encountered. Purple Heart recipients. Purple Heart recipient is distinguished military doctrine awarded in the name of the President to those who have been wounded or killed while serving in the United States Armed Forces. Eligibility for the Purple Heart applies to service members who suffered a wound as direct or indirect result of any action. The wound required treatment by a medical officer at the time of injury. Those who received a Gulf War Medal or Award, Operation Iraqi Freedom, or Operation Enduring Freedom, or Desert Storm, often referred to as the Southwest Asia Service Medal. So operations that took part in the Gulf War from August 2nd, 1990 through present day and was stationed within the area of responsibility within the Southwest Asia Service Operation. 
Vietnam Campaign Medal or Vietnam Medal award winners. These are individuals who served and were in country or in the waters off of Vietnam. They would have been awarded a Vietnam Medal or Campaign Medal if they would set foot within the country of Vietnam or within the 12 mile knot uh, boundary of the international waters of Vietnam. Additionally, that took part in combat or actions that supported combat actions within Vietnam. These are our Vietnam veterans. <laughs> Korean conflict. We don't run across very many of them anymore, uh, but they took part in an action within June 7, 1950 through, sorry, January 31st, um, 1955. Um, peacetime or Cold War veterans. These are veterans that took part in actions that happened during non-wartime service. This is service that happened after 1975 through August of 1990, or 1955 through um, June of 1961. Then we have the Vietnam era veterans. So that is a larger category. These are In addition to being Vietnam veterans or Vietnam War veterans, Vietnam era veterans were veterans that served around the world in the United States and in foreign territories in support of the political missions of the United States. When you entered into the military, you didn't get to choose where you went to. The military told you where to go. So you might end up in Vietnam or you might have ended up in Germany or in New Mexico. They didn't tell you, you didn't get to choose where you went, they told you where to win. And they served and they volunteered or they were drafted just like anybody else. And it is important that we recognize their contributions to our security and our safety during that time. So, thank you guys for your service. Just because an individual served during the peacetime doesn't mean that they didn't take part in operations that could have been involved in enemy action. Um, Operation Just Cause, Panama Invasion, December 1st, 1989 through January of 1990. Combat operations took place in Panama at that time. As well as Operation Urgent Fury, the invasion of Granada. Those took place. And military individuals, service individuals, were forced into combat action even though we weren't at a time of war. And there are people that we need to be honored as well. And furthermore, our World War II veterans. One of the great honors I've recently had through myself and my office has been helping World War II veterans receive the recognition that they so richly deserve. As I was growing up, my grandparents and many of my grandparents' friends were all part of the World War II era and generation. Well, as we've gotten older, they have gotten older, our children no longer get the chance to speak and talk with them. So if you ever have a chance to come across a World War II veteran and talk to them, ask them about their time and their service, it is an important lesson that we don't want to lose just because of our ever marching age and time. It is important that we recognize that Veterans Day is for the veteran, for those that are still walking and living, still breathing. Armed Forces Day are for active duty Armed Forces members. And Memorial Day is a day that we remember those who paid that ultimate sacrifice for our safety and security. So on today's date, I would like to say thank you to all the veterans that have showed up today. 
and all those family members that support our veterans. Thank you guys. Okay, thank you Keith. We will now present gifts to our veterans here today. Tyson! 